Hi, welcome to the Red Aspen Photography Classroom. This is our lesson one. Um, when I teach workshops, this is actually where I start out with my basics class. So I'm gonna teach this to you all. If you have a phone, then you most likely have a camera. Uh, if you have a DSLR, then this works as well. It really works for anyone who has a camera. Today we're gonna talk about the grid system. I love talking about the grid system because it talks about rules um, and breaking rules and the foundation of photography and the art of photography, which is super interesting. Let's actually back up because I like to explain history and reasoning before even applying something. So then you kind of understand where we're coming from and why this even started. During the Renaissance period, what happened was painters wanted to have the ability to include the background, what was going on with behind their subjects because Back then, what you would see, and if you've been to museums, I'm sure you've seen that during the pre-Renaissance period, is a portrait of someone looking on like this. Usually they're a little bit like this, they're looking on, that's about it. Not a lot going on in the background. Well, they wanted to change that. They wanted to bring the landscape or what's happening behind them. In order to do that, they had to reposition the subject. And this is where the thirds came in. Where's our eye drawn to and where's our eye not drawn to? In the painting, in the process of painting, they realized that the eye doesn't rest on the center if you're doing the background. Your eye moves with the objects around it. Um, naturally, our eyes, if you're looking at something, you're usually looking at it dead on in the center. That's what we like. That's what our mind likes. Um, so the science behind it is we don't like disorder. We try to avoid it. Um, we're trying to find order and patterns and systems that makes sense to us. And subconsciously, we're doing that all day long. We're actually looking for those patterns, especially in nature, we're looking for patterns and sequences. So this is disrupting all that. So thirds is actually really catchy to our eye. It draws us in, it creates a little bit of mystery, and that's what you really want. That's what you want to pull in those looking at your artwork. Let me just recap. We like to look at things square on center like this right here in the middle, right? But what we're going to do is change that all up. We're not going to do that. I'm gonna explain this awesome grid. <laughs> I love this thing. We like to do things in one thirds or two thirds. So here's like one third of it, or you're using two thirds of the grid system. These are called power points where the intersections happen. And they are just that, they're very powerful points in the grid. You place me here, it's a little bit different. I have all this background here, it's telling more of a story. You place me up here, same deal, a little different. Same thing, a little different. I love being able to move my subjects around and find what feels right to me within the grid system. I don't turn on the grid system in my camera anymore. You're welcome to do that though. If you wanna start doing that, it allows you to get a little bit comfortable with um, seeing the grid system. I feel like I just like see it as I'm photographing. I move my subjects a lot. I, I am a big fan of this right here. This is a lot of what I do. It allows for, as we talked about, the subject to be right here and then for this whole back, background and story coming to light. It is unique, it's different, it allows for creativity. Um, I like having negative space. Negative space is all this right here. Our, our space is very small. We're using a subject right here in the small little space and this is all wide open. That's our negative space. Um, negative space really helps our mind pull into the subject and look at the subject very closely. And that's what we want. We wanna draw people in and have them connect with our work. Another option is to line up with the line. So you can line your subject up with these lines. So you have that option too. What I want you to do, your homework is, you're gonna go and find a subject. That subject can be, let's see, what do we have here? A succulent. Uh, it could be your cat or dog animal you have. It could be your um, partner. You can really use whatever, a tree. I want you to test out the rule of thirds. So start with our basic, this is where we used to be, dead center, and then start using these PowerPoints and see what you like. See what you like to do. Um, and then you'll kind of learn that different rule of the rule of thirds. And if you want to break the rule, you can break the rule. Now you know the rule. But go out there and test it out and have fun. And if you have any questions about the rule of thirds and how it works or how I use it, um, or any questions about involving it uh, in just daily life photography, feel free to DM me or reach out and leave a comment. I'm happy to help and share a little bit more about it.